if you think that I meditate well, I know better Dhamma than you. I hope I'm going to be a Sota Panna in the next week. I mean, this could be like unnecessary stuff. It's a Dhamma journey. It takes time, yeah. Even it takes time or not, we don't have to develop certain thinking about even good things or bad things. So, first thing is that believe in the anicca in the form of change. That's the first thing to fully recover from a sickness. When things are happening in my life, in your life, we call them phenomena, experiences. We normally bring clinging to those experiences. Let's take a very good example. Somebody criticizes us. The person who was complimenting us all the way, all of a sudden going to criticize us. Maybe your boss, big boss, suddenly criticize you. You never expected. Now you are very uncomfortable with this. You know what's going to, don't know what's going to happen to you. So what's happening that you are trying to cling to that particular event. But if you believe that this can, this will be changed if I work in a different way, if I become smart, if I work on my areas where I have to work on, then this change can happen. That's why on the Dhamma side, the Buddha says <coughs> that when the clinging is attached to the experience, then you are going to not understand about the anicca. Uh, so, Dhamma understanding about uh, anicca sanya is that try to find out whether you have developed clinging to your five aggregates. Uh, say, for instance, uh, Vedana. Vedana. Vedana means feelings. Let's say you have been uh, cheated by somebody in the past. And then uh, now you are thinking, I was such a good person, but I was cheated by this person. Then, then you are creating a very hard wide understanding about that cheating. You are bringing, clinging to that particular event. Who is going to cheat? Are the animals going to cheat us? They should be the humans. Humans like us, love us, cheat us. You know? So we understand differently. So, we should never bring clinging to any of those events, even to our meditation practices. If you think that I meditate well, I know better Dhamma than you, I hope I am going to be a Sota Panna in the next week. I mean, this could be like unnecessary stuff. It's a Dhamma journey. It takes time, yeah. Even it takes time or not, we don't have to develop certain clinging about even good things or bad things. So, first thing is that believe in the anicca in the form of change. That's the first thing to fully recover from a sickness. Now, let me tell you, this sickness can go from mental sickness and physical sickness. Uh, oftentimes, our sicknesses are mental. Our, most of the sicknesses are mental, stress-based sicknesses. Uh, we have high expectations. And we believe that other person will behave like this for me, right? So then we are bringing lots of uh, frustration, disappointments into that, right? So uh, basically, anicca sanya here means believing in the change. And then uh, this recovery can be mental and physical. Mental means emotional as well. Second perception is. Not self, this is very interesting. Not self, anatta sanya. What is anatta? Anatta. Anatta means this is the highest Dhamma teaching in Buddhism, Buddhist philosophy. Anatta means the Buddha says there is nothing you can take as self. So, so you can't translate this to be. Uh, Non-self, it's a bad translation. There are translations that go by non-self. No, we have a self. Otherwise, who is going to go through the pain in the leg? There is a self. But that self, you can't take it as self. It is, it is not non-self, it is 
something you cannot take as self. So we, we call it not self, not non-self. That's why uh, uh, Western Enlightenment schools, they are saying that Buddhism is such a, uh, is, they don't have such a, you know, uh, radical enlightening statement. But this statement is such a radical statement. Nobody talks about it. Who says in any philosophy, we don't exist? Right? Not self. Right? So, this is the most important teaching that we can use when we are going through pain, disappointment, suffering, uh, and whatever frustrations. So, uh, when you, that's why some of the Buddhist teachings, the way how people translate, have been very ridiculous. You know, We have no self. Then who is experiencing pain happiness? There is a self, but we cannot take it as self all the way. Right? So, this understanding called anatta means, I would say, previous self, present self, future self. Now, one very good example is, someone is to uh, criticize us, blame us. Maybe... Uh, Yesterday, he or she blamed us. Now you are thinking that, ah, I am such a good person, I was so good. How come you blame me? I've been so good on you. How come you blame on me? And then he or she is trying to defend now his or her position, maybe going to retaliate, maybe going to defend that this shouldn't have happened. But what if you think about that 755, Yesterday, uh, there was my previous self. My previous self at 7.55 yesterday was blamed by somebody and that previous self does not exist anymore. Why? Because of anatta. So who was blamed? It's not my, uh, myself. It was my previous self that was blamed. Anatta. And then you are not going to react to these people. Like when somebody sent you a bad email, bad WhatsApp message, and you are thinking, I want to. I'm not going to pity on these people. I'm going to reply bad right away. Very bad people, you know. But somehow you cannot reply to this person. Then you are going to reply next day. Then your anger has, has been, and your anger has been postponed, huh? You have postponed your anger and you see the happiness of postponing your anger, frustration. So it's good to postpone our bad emotions. You, know? you normally postpone unnecessary things. It's good to postpone our bad states of mind. So what I was trying to say is that this anatta as a perception is very important because then we are not going to create unnecessary connections to our previous self so that we are not creating any problems. Dhamma context, how the Buddha says is that we have uh, 12 areas where we are creating this issue. What are they? Six senses and six sense objects. What are they? Eye and sight, ear and sound, nose and smell, tongue and taste, body and touch, mind and thoughts. We are thinking that they are not holding a permanent self. They have a previous self and I'm going to take it as not self. So that I can, I can say that it was not me who was blamed. It was not me who was insulted. It was not me who was that complimented. It was not me who was uh, that praised. It was my previous self and I understand that moment. So bringing anatta into your personal experiences can create lots of happiness and then instantly this will create you lots of recovery. Now say for instance there is someone who is having a very very bad pain, maybe a knee pain and he doesn't want to go, she doesn't want to go for a knee replacement because of the complications and now someone is saying don't worry this shall pass, this pain is anicca also, this pain is anatta. Is it easy to understand? It's not that very easy. But if the person has developed a certain level of anatta, not self in the past, 
he or she can think about yes this leg is painful this body is painful but I don't have to think that there is a permanent self that is existing in my body because when I die I die I leave the body I go that will help them not to create lots of connections to the body unnecessarily that instantly opens up another level of recovery these are recovery levels one by one, one, by one you are creating that 